Our next uh, presentation will be a virtual presentation. So the speaker is presenting from online. Uh, his name, uh, her name is uh, Dr. Emmanuel uh, Segala from Geo uh, from Council of Geosciences. This is at that position, and uh, she will be talking about application of high performance computing at Council for Geosciences. Um, I'm not sure. I think uh, over to you. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Emmanuel Sakana. I'm going to give a presentation on the application of high-performance computing at the Council for Geoscience. This is work that uh, the CGS is doing in collaboration with the Center of High-Performance Computing. Uh, this is a disclaimer that shows that uh, if you want to use any of the information in this presentation, you need to seek consent from the Council for Geoscience. So as part of my presentation, I'm going to give an overview about the Council for Geoscience, and then uh, we look at uh, geoscience innovation from the concept where we are now and what we anticipate to get in the future. Uh, after which, I will look at application of HPC in geoscience, looking mainly at urban, inter urban data evasion, magnetotelic data evasion, and seismological data processing, after which I'll conclude. The Council for Geoscience is one of the National Science Councils in South Africa, which is established uh, under the Geoscience Act uh, 100 of uh, 1993, which is a, a legal success of the Geological Survey of South Africa, which was formed in, in 1920 uh, by the com combination of uh, three former uh, surveys. So the head office is in Pretoria. And so the mandate of the CGS is to do systematic onshore and offshore geoscience mapping. Uh, also, we do geoscience research into nature and the origin of rocks. We also do collection and correlation of uh, geoscience data, which is part of uh, the National Geoscience Repository. We also do compilation development of comprehensive and integrated geoscience knowledge and information, such as geology, geophysics, geochemistry, and other disciplines. We also contribute to mineral exploration and also contribute to uh, the legacy of uh, collecting of geoscience data for the development of uh, the nation. We also uh, run uh, one of the biggest uh, bore core repository in Pretoria. We also run the National Geophysics uh, Test Sites and will also advise the state in terms of geological matters. So as a strategy for the CGS, uh, we, we, we are, as I said earlier on, we're looking at on and offshore mapping uh, with the aim of uh, contributing to the economic development of the country through increase of mineral resource pipeline, energy security, groundwater mapping, marine mapping, geohazards, geoscience innovation, which is uh, the one that I'm going to give more emphasis on today. So the Geoscience Center for Geoscience uh, creates data which is uh, at a pre-competitive uh, stage where all the other uh, mineral exploration projects are derived from, from, from the data that the Council for Geoscience produce. So these are some of the examples of the data that the Council for Geoscience produce and it's, it, it, and it's within our database. So as an overview of geoscience, this is whereby we are looking at uh, the study of the earth, looking at the processes and products, and also look how the earth has evolved over time, trying to reconstruct the past events and uh, trying to understand the current earth and try to map our way into the future as well. So the geoscience has been a fundamental uh, aspect of, in, in, in the development of uh, in human development which date back into, into, into the 1790s with the birth of the modern geoscience, as we understand it. So combined with the innovation studies, which started around uh, uh, the steam power uh, industrial age and the birth of the modern geoscience, we've seen geoscience contributing immensely into the development in human. So geoscience innovation as a concept is whereby we're looking at generating of new or significantly improved uh, geoscience knowledge uh, to generate value in terms of social, 
economic, cultural, and institutional for the betterment of the community. So this is a combination of uh, of three fields. There's geoscience in terms of research, there's innovation studies in terms of understanding the processes and, and systems, and also combined with the with the with the drivers that we are the reason for innovation. So combining all those, you come up with geoscience innovation. We are mainly looking at solution-oriented starting to how we generate and adapt innovations in, for the development of the economy and the larger social economy. So why would we have to do geoscience innovation? Mainly, as I said, we're contributing to a social development, sustainability of the of, of, of the country, economic development, uh, long-term change in terms of uh, earth stewardship and also for financial gains as well. So in terms of the current geoscience uh, innovation, we're looking at the future in terms of uh, several uh, interfaces with uh, digital systems, of which today I'm going to look at the three uh, critical systems that uh, have earmarked to be the future of geoscience, which is a uh, common model, digital twin systems and high performance computing. So in terms of the common earth model, this is whereby we, we try to do interpretations uh, in various fields, but uh, the idea is to get a model that talks to all these data sets uh, in order to have a, what we call a common earth model. This is an example, like we combine geology, geophysics and petrophysics information in order to come up with a petrophysical model. So in terms of uh, digital twin technology, this is whereby we are generating a replica of the actual condition in a, in a digital space. For example, in this particular case, we're looking at the digital twin of the earth systems. For example, we might be looking at global, international, global, uh, continental or national scale uh, in order to map the, 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 the geoscience uh, field into, a, a, for example, the image you see, that's a, a 3D dimensional volume of a, a, an outcrop. So this contributes to research and development training, and also we have the capacity now to do remote monitoring and also improve collaboration and decision making. So, and uh, as a talk for this day, high performance has been in contributing to, to, to the geoscience development in terms of now we're able to compute at high speed and they also were able to optimize the, the our algorithms and do a lot of simulation and also visualize our data in 3D volume. As you know, or, or maybe you would understand geoscience data can be large data sets. So in terms of application of uh, HPC at the Council for Geoscience, uh, we have been we started using the HPC in May 2019, and uh, we see an exponential growth in the usage of the HPC over the years. Uh, the calls that we run mainly are in evasion of uh, uh, the RML 3D calls, uh, the geoscience analyst, uh, and, and they also we run the uh, the GALEI 1D evasion calls. We also run the, the, the open quick calls. And then so far we've run two, three, 623 jobs with over, with over 150 thousand uh, CPU hours and so as a as a as an idea as a as a just to show you perspective in what we, we use the HPC for. Uh, we also do what they call uh, able electromagnetic uh, data way an uh, aircraft uh, collects the data through a loop like that. It's actually more on uh, an EM induction approach where we have a transmitter and the receiver we send the current into the ground we, we measure what the response is and they, we try to image the, the earth in terms of the resistivity. Various rocks will give different uh, rocks so we're able to image the earth. So once we've collected that data, we need to, 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 to move back from the data to go back into to generating a geological model. So that's why we use the HPC both the data sometimes that we collect might be a lot of big data that needs a, a high power computing resources. Uh, so also the other, it's still on the airborne uh, invasion. So as I said, we collect data in lines. So we generate 1D evasion. That is, at each single point, there is a, a, a response that we get. So we convert that response into a connectivity response and be able to develop a, a, a 3D volume 
of the earth, uh, of which we, in this particular example, we, we use the, the, the geoscience uh, Australian uh, GIL evasion algorithms to generate a 3D volume of the earth. With this information, we'll be able to, to locate minerals uh, of economic importance. The other method that we do is a magnetotolery. This is whereby it's a ground-based process where we do go to the field uh, with this equipment, with, which measures the electric and the and magnetic properties of the rocks, which is a, a passive uh, source where we, we, we use the the earth, we use the the the, the the lightnings as a as a mode of generating of the of the energy as compared to the previous one where the loop actually generates a signal. This one was passive, but we generate the signal from natural sources. And then we measure the, the time variant in terms of the electric and magnetic properties and we're able to compute the resistivity variation up to depth of 200 meters. So in do, to do this, we, we have to do what they call the 3D evasion. So this is an example in the Northern Cape where we took a several number of stations and we'll be able to, to, to run these codes on the on the HPC. Uh, for example, this code, this area we have to run about four to five hours, uh, 50 iterations, and the match can be quite big. Uh, for example, this is Northern Cape where we're, we're profiling it at 50 to 50 uh, uh, and 60 small cubes. So you can imagine how big the, the information is. is you can't run it on, a, on an ordinary PC, hence we use the HPC to do that. So this is an example that we generate. So we're able to image the earth up to 200 meters. And with this information, we're able to, to, to decode and, and uh, separate how the response is according to the geological information. This information is critical for uh, mineral exploration as we understand that uh, the deposits that don't happen, they have to be uh, they happen due to a combination of several processes that are interlocked together to come up with a mineralization. This is an example in Achines uh, mineralized system. So we also do seismological data interpretation. For example, the map that you see there shows a, a, lo a location of uh, uh, events that uh, are used to compute uh, to compute a, a model of of where possible earthquakes can happen because we know earthquakes are normally associated with structures. So we need to identify zones in which uh, these events happen. So we combine that with a, a model called a, a ground motion model. And then for as we give you a perspective, we have over like 3,000 3, events that we combine into, into, into 28 uh, seismic source that we integrate with the, with the ground motion. And then with this on an ordinary PC, you run it will run at least for 72 hours. But with an HPC, you take over under four hours. So that's the model that you get. So this model is critical because uh, when you want to plan any any major uh, infrastructure development, you need to understand uh, how the uh, the peak ground accelerations are so that you'll be able to inform the engineers on what structures they can build and uh, also to input into the in, into the civil engineering works. So in conclusion, uh, we can see that the geoscience uh, has been a fundamental contributor in terms of human development and trying to address some of the, uh, the grand challenges like uh, unemployment through the development of the geoscience data that will feed into the mining industry that leads into development of new mines. So we see that Application of high-performance computer is one of the critical uh, ingredients in the geoscience innovation in initiative, which is meant to, to drive the societal challenges. And then uh, we have seen uh, three examples in the airborne electromagnetic, magnetotolerant, and the seismological application. So as we, the world is migrating to digital connected world across various geoscience fields, the, the data that we collect and uh, accumulate, it's increasing over time. So hence, we need to come up with a new computational approaches of which uh, the HPC is one of uh, the, the tools that are augmenting us in terms of extracting useful information from the data that we collect. And hence, the, the Center for High Performance Compute has been a pivotal role in augmenting the Council for Geoscience Computing Resources uh, to execute its mandate. Uh, thank you so much for attending to this presentation. Thank you.